Welcome back to a mental health break. I'm your host and author of the book, Mr. Lancey Talks Mental Health, Vincent A. Lancey. And I'm uh, Dr. Carlos Garcia. Dr. Garcia rejoins the show for another bonus episode of COVID Talks. I have decided to continue this bonus series a little longer as there are still lockdowns present around the world. Each guest that I bring back will add value to your lives by sharing their experiences throughout the pandemic. For those of you new to the show, each week I interview a different mental health professional or advocate from around the globe to share their authentic story relating to mental health. While I was a college student, I was the victim of a hit and run accident while on foot. After coming out of a coma and suffering from a traumatic brain injury, or you may know of as a TBI, I soon realized it was time to put my mental health on a very high pedestal. This transformative experience has led me to create this podcast that is all things mental health. It is time for another episode of COVID Talks. For this episode, I am happy to bring back a guest from season one, episode 23, Dr. Carlos Garcia. Carlos runs Tampa Counseling and Wellness here in Tampa, Florida, and is a licensed clinical psychologist. He provides counseling and coaching to individuals who are looking to make a major transformation in their lives. His areas of expertise include anxiety, depression, relationship issues, and those who struggle with motivation and self-esteem. He has always been a big supporter of my work, including my latest book, Mr. Lancey Talks Mental Health. He actually bought some copies to put in his office. He will add value as a mental health advocate, professional, and also his perspective as a business owner during the pandemic. Allow me to now introduce Dr. Carlos Garcia. Carlos, it's great to reconnect with you, and thank you for rejoining the show. Hey, thank you, Vince. It's always uh, always good to connect with you, and uh, you know, I know how dedicated and passionate you are to getting out there and, and educating the community on, on mental health. And that's, uh, you know, that, that's something that, that I love about you, you know? Well, thank you for the amazing words. Would you mind now please taking the time to reintroduce yourself to our listeners? And again, please share your role relating to mental health. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, uh, like you said, I'm a licensed uh, clinical psychologist. I've been doing this for about seven years. Uh, I have sort of a unique background in that prior to that, I worked as a, a fireman and paramedic uh, for about seven years. And prior to that, I was in the United States Marine Corps. So um, I know a little bit about mental health and mental health struggles. Um, I also, you know, have my own experience with therapy and, uh, you know, love how I'm able to bring that to to my clients, right, and to be able to relate to them. And, uh, you know, when they're, when they're dealing with a struggle, to be able to, to really understand where they're coming from. And so I have my own private practice here in, in Tampa, and I'm just passionate. I'm passionate not only about this education piece and letting people know about the reality of mental health, right? There's still so much stigma and, and misinformation out there and about helping my clients move through some of their, their big struggles in life. Thank you for that introduction, Carlos. And I think it is now a great time to get into the main event. On each episode with a new guest on this platform, my guest and I go through a series of questions called the main event. For all bonus episodes on this platform, including COVID talks and how writing helps episodes, we will also have a main event of their own. You ready to go, Carlos? Ready to do it. Let's do it. Great. So let's begin the show with getting into how your mental health was affected overall from the pandemic. Yeah. You know, I reflect on this often, uh, Vince, and I think there were some parts where, you know, other than having to wear the protective gear and, and sort of be at home a little bit more, which didn't bother me much because I'm a homebody as it is. Yep, yep. Um, it was a bit of an, a different experience for me. And I think that's because my focus was on not only my business, but my clients. And because my focus was on helping others through, you know, their struggles, um, I think it, it, you know, there was a little bit less time for me to focus on, on what was going on for me internally. Um, but, you know, I think, I think we were all impacted through the increased amount of anxiety and stress about the uncertainty, right. not just the uncertainty of, of the health issues that come with COVID, uh, and you know, how that might impact us or even our families, but you know, the political climate, 
right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and the social unrest. And, and it you know, wasn't just COVID. It was all of these things that came together uh, to create, you know, I think a lot of panic for, for, for people. Yeah, I like what you said there, too. It wasn't just COVID. There was so much going on. And a lot of people who are big time extroverts out of the house, that's limited. People who got that exercise simply by going to work in the morning aren't in the gym. They're losing that. And when you're home on the couch all day, unfortunately, poor dieting follows. Mm -hmm. So your advice today is going to help a lot of people, especially from your professional standpoint. But we touched on a few challenging areas. What was the most difficult part for you during this pandemic? <laughs> you know, this is going to sound super selfish, but I had four <laughs> vacations canceled <laughs> in 2020, and it was it was frustrating, right? Because you you know you put so much hard work and mm -hmm. and time and effort into into work, and you know finally I had this time to relax, and, and it, you know I had to sort of reschedule and, and, and cancel some of those things. Um, I think the other challenging part is, you know, you said it, I'm, I'm an extrovert, right? And, and sort of, I like being out there in the community. I like speaking engagements. I'm a speaker as well, uh, like you. And so having to shift over to doing some of that on, on a Zoom platform, uh, uh, just not being able to get out there and, and that social interaction was, was really tough. It, it felt, you know, pretty isolating for me. I can agree with you there. I like being home. I like working by myself. I'm, I'm okay with that transition because that didn't affect me. But we all need that regular interaction. And then with COVID, when you did see people, it was not the same handshake because that handshake could be a very lethal one. Interactions but, became very awkward and weird all of a sudden for everyone, you know? Yeah, I'll shout out a former COVID talks uh, person I brought on, Evan Pulliam. He is big smiler loves the positive interaction with people and he said that wave on the internet just really isn't the same as a high five or a random person right. interaction helping someone's day improve just by that random smile but Absolutely. how have you been coping with all this additional stress this additional change how you been getting through it carlos yeah yeah vincent i think it's important for me when life gets stressful to to get grounded and one of the ways i do that is by uh shifting my perspective you know, it's it's obviously very easy to get into this mindset of, you know, all of this change, all of this negativity, mm -hmm. you know, how am I going to cope and to shift my perspective to, you know, let me stop and be grateful uh, for the for the place in which I'm in. Right. For the things that I, I do have currently for for the support, whether that's from from family and, and, and friends. Um, I think that's important for me. Another way that I, I, I get grounded is. Uh, to really take some time for self-care, mm. right? Which is, it's easy for me. And I think for a lot of people to put to the side. So I think some of the extra time was like, okay, let me get back to some of the meditating. Let me get back to, you know, taking care of, of myself physically with nutrition and exercise. And, you know, I think that helped to manage and decrease some of that stress and anxiety about what was going on out there in the world. We had a chance to stop and slow down, catch up on some things that we may have pushed past. So that's a great piece of advice for everybody listening on. We are moving towards more normalcy, but you can't be supportive to others in the fullest capacity if you can't take care of yourself, even just with the smallest steps. And the way I describe meditating to people, since you touched on that, I had crazy unrealistic expectations for it as some kind of magic potion. And yeah. then I realized it's training my, myself to not think about certain thoughts. And I don't do 20 minutes of meditation. That's not for me. It may work for other people. I try to just be conscious of implementing a few minutes here and there when I can, just because I know that if I do do this task, <laughs> my day will probably go a little better in the long run. My week may extend and so forth. But now that we touched on the more difficult parts, the upsetting parts of COVID, let's put a smile on our listeners' face. <laughs> what are some positives that ended up coming out of this 2020 pandemic for you? Yeah, yeah. And so here's, you know, here's one of the things I'm grateful for, but but my business has has really taken off, right? And so, you know, at the beginning of this, I forecasted that, you know, there was gonna be a lot more people dealing with stress and and, and mental health issues. And we needed to be prepared to uh, have the resources and the availability for, for clients coming in. Yep. And so I focused on growing my business. We moved into a bigger office. Yes, I, you I did. brought on some, awesome. some new therapists. Um, and so, you know, 
starting off in, in January, February, right? We had a, a sort of a dip at the beginning, um, but now, you know, the, the phones are, 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 are ringing every day, you know, much more than they have been in the last year. And I feel good because we're prepared, right? We, we're, we're here. Um, we have the availability. We don't have to put people on a wait list. And, you know, sometimes you call yeah. or psychiatrists, it's like a couple months wait. We can usually get you in within the week. And so um, I'm really grateful that, that, you know, that was able to, to transpire. It's great because as someone who knows you to see how far your progression has come because you do work hard. And I think another learning lesson right there for everybody listening on, whether you're in your own business or not, just preparation reduces stress and increases efficiency. He prepared, expanded his office size, brought some personnel on, and now he's able to have people not on a wait list. And I've been on the phone call on the wrong <laughs> end of saying, oh, we could get you in in two months. And I said, well, then this isn't going to be the right fit yeah. for me. Yeah, we're in distress now. I, I need I need help now. You know, and that's the biggest thing, and that's why this podcast I'm so honored to host because it has made it past the first year, and I get to have people like you come on the show, passionate people help others through this. Because if you can't get a therapist appointment, you can turn on this podcast. Mm -hmm. Let's now talk about your entire work life, not just the recent beginnings here, which are so great. Starting back last March, 2020, how was your work life affected overall? Yeah, so it, it it was tough because when you know when you own your own business for for those people out there who are entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, um, you know everything depends on on your business running well, right? All of your energy is invested in in making sure that you know in, in some ways you you can pay the bills, right? And when business is not going well, that sort of stress can. Uh, you know, you you don't leave it at the office. It, it comes home with you. It, 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 if it's overwhelming enough, it can spill over into relationship issues. And so um, there was a bit of panic, right? Because at the time, it was just me. Um, so there wasn't other, other ways to, to generate revenue. And for a therapist, um, it's, a, it's a very direct correlation. Mm -hmm. If I'm seeing clients, if I'm putting the hours in, that's when I'm getting paid, right? There's no sort of passive um, right. income. And so, yeah, there was clients that, you know, whether for wanting to protect themselves health-wise or just financially weren't able to, to keep coming in, there was this significant dip and, I, you know, it, it, it'll, it'll shake you. Um, but it was all about, hey, remember, uh, you know, remember what you've been through. Re remember how strong you are mentally. Remember and think about all of the challenges you've been through in life. And you've been able to get through them and you've been able to get back up and stay focused in that area. This is not different. You will get past this as well. You will find the way to do it no matter what. And so keeping my mindset in that space really helped to, again, manage that anxiety and allow me to focus on instead of sitting around wondering, OK, what's going to happen next? Let me take control of this. Right. Yeah, I've lost control in, 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 you know, in some of the areas of my life. But what do I have control over now? Right. And how do I want to plan for the future? What do I want to do moving forward? And that really just having that was, you know, made me feel very hopeful and motivated. Right there. Worry about what you can control and what you could put that. I mean, obviously, easier said than done. We've all heard that advice where some may say it's cliche, but it's not because. If you can train your mindset, perhaps with tools like meditation or exercise, train yourself to the power of thinking. Yeah. Well, and I, uh, you know, one of the things I, I tell the, the folks I work with on control, right? Um, control is a way of, of trying to implement certainty in our lives and in, in, in structure, right? And in, in thinking that, um, you know, we, we, again, that we have more control than we really believe. We don't. Right. Our, our partner can walk out on us tomorrow. We can walk into work and, you know, lose our job. Um, so it's an illusion. And I think when we give that up and realize, you know, I, I don't have as much control of every little thing in my life. One, it helps to alleviate that constant tension that we feel of trying to control everything in our lives. And so that was just like, oh, a weight off of my shoulders, allowing me again, like you said, Vincent, to focus on what do I have control over? What can I change? Um, and that, you know, that just sort of set free a, a, a lot of mental energy for me. I mean, especially when your worlds all come to a crashing halt, it feels like you can't control anything. But 
something I did. I just drowned myself in some work, create some work. Sometimes the opportunity is right in front of you and you just have to create it, pick up a headset, open your computer, get the podcast going. Can be one example of how to make it happen. But this has been such a valuable episode so far. And now I want to get into something that can help everybody, no matter who the listener is in our lives, whether it be their own siblings, cousins, or friends, we all have children in our lives. What advice do you have for everyone listening that will help with the mental health of the kids in their lives? Yeah. You know, Vincent, this is something you are really familiar with and are, are doing work towards, you know, with, with things like your book. And that's educating, right? Um, if we, you know, I have so many clients that come in here and will say, or have spent so much of their lives repressing their, their sadness, their, their resentment, their anger, and, and so many other feelings, um, because the message in our culture is often like, those feelings are not okay. Right. And, and you need to keep all that stuff inside. And after, you know, after a certain amount of time, we, we just can't, we're not, we're human, right. We're, we're not, we're not, you know, Superman, superwoman. And so I think educating your kids on, you know, it's, it's, it's okay to feel sad. You know, it's, it's okay to feel angry. These are feelings you're going to go through and, and we can have conversations about them and allowing children to sort of really express those things and understand that life does get difficult. Right. And that when life does get difficult, how do we want to manage those feelings? How do we want to manage some of that stuff? Um, you know, I, I know that for parents, the initial reaction is like, let me come to the rescue. Mm -hmm. Let me let me, you know, remove all problems and, and all, all all negative things from from their way. Um, beautiful instinct. But at the same time, we're, you know, we're taking away their opportunity to learn how to manage the difficult things and the difficult emotion that comes with those things in, in life. And so I think, again, having those open conversations, teaching children about uh, feelings, mental health, and really removing that, that stigma very early on, uh, I think is the most, the most powerful and amazing thing we can do. I agree with everything you said, and I appreciate the kind words in the beginning with my education. It, things are gonna happen no matter what. So whether I, these kids understand what's going to happen or they get blindsided by what's going to happen, is all the difference and all the difference into preventing a potential mental health disparity. Absolutely. And it's just something now with the abundance of information on the internet, you can't possibly monitor your child all day on every device. They go to their friend's house. They're not censored, whatever in life we're going to win. We're going to lose. We're going to get knocked down and we're going to stand up again. It's important to teach the children that these things can happen. We can't win all the time. We can't finish first all the time. And people may be mean, people may be hurtful, but you'll be okay. You'll get back up and you'll be yeah. okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, you know, God, so well said. Um, I, I know sometimes it's hard for us when we're struggling to realize, again, those moments when we have been strong, those things we have, you know, gotten through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it never ceases to amaze me, no matter how long I do this work, how absolutely resilient and brave human beings can be, right? And, and so sometimes we doubt and question our ability to cope, but when we're faced with that challenge, we find the way and um, remind yourself of that consistently and constantly. Thank you so much for coming back on the show for a bonus episode. I know the listeners are going to see all the value in your show. I loved how you gave such tangible ways to cope with the stress, cope with the anxiety, all the changes from the pandemic, the positives coming out of the pandemic, you opened a practice, you saw that there's, you need to help people, you don't want to give these everybody a wait for a month, you came back out there. And of course, your advice for children, you hit it right on. But as you remember, it's time for the last word. And I also do this on the other show, that entrepreneur show, because I want our listeners to really get to know all of the guests I bring on. Is there something that you would like to share that we did not touch on yet today? Yeah, and the message I always share, which is um, move past the, the, the shame or, or the stigma or these preconceived notions you have about mental health. Um, you know, every one of my clients, after we've worked together for a couple months, will say the same thing. God, everyone should do this. And I'm like, yeah, right? Everyone should do this because it's not, again, it's not about I have a mental health condition. It's about something in my life feels off and, and I don't know what it is. Come in, let's, let's talk about it. 
You know, for some folks, it's like, oh, I just had to change my perspective around a couple of things. Beautiful. Let's let's get you on your way. Or maybe there's some deeper stuff and, and, and some deeper healing that needs to get done. Let's do that. So you don't keep carrying that stuff around in your life. And, and, and to set you free and, and to move you into a space of inspiration and contentment and joy in life. Um, so, so leave that stigma behind, leave those beliefs behind, reach out to a coach, a therapist, a counselor. Um, it'll change your life. You have to think mental health aside, having someone to bounce ideas and rationalize your thoughts with can never do any harm. So yeah. give it a shot, whether it's coaching, therapy, bring someone into your corner because I promise it will propel you in ways you did not even see imaginable. Can you now take the time to please share your professional social media, your website, any ways for our listeners to request your services, follow your endeavors? Yeah, so um, you know the, the name of my practice is Tampa Counseling and Wellness. And so if you look that up on, on Facebook and, um, and Instagram, you, you can find us, Tampa Counseling and Wellness. Uh, you know, I always am, am so open to giving, you know, my number out, uh, 813-644-1791. Um, and whether it's a, a question about mental health, whether it's something you're struggling with and you want a couple of tips, reach out, you know, um, any time of day. I mean, if you, you know, reach out at three in the morning, uh, you might have to wait till I wake up at 4.30 in the morning, but I will, <laughs> I will get to you, right? And I want to make myself accessible. Um, so find us, reach out with, with questions or concerns, or even if you're, you know, you're ready to come on in and, 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 and change some things in your life. And it is also social media time for the show, and we're on whichever platform you like to use. We're at a mental health break on LinkedIn. Facebook and Instagram and on Twitter, we're at podcasts by Lancey. So you have updates from this show and that entrepreneur show. Of course, my handles on all social media and YouTube are at Vincent A. Lancey and my website is vincentalancey.com. If you check out any of my books, DM me. I would love to hear from you. We have Mr. Lancey Talks Mental Health, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption, and how to transform your mindset when the norm has changed, all are on my website now. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate the show five stars and continue listening by subscribing. That's all for this week, and I'll see you all on the next episode of A Mental Health Break.